Hi, and on behalf of Attorney Frogmouse in the Elm Tree and myself, welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. Today, we're going to continue our applications of welfare economics. We're going to look at the welfare economics of a sales tax. So far, when we've been looking at gains from trade, we've looked at the benefits to buyers and we've looked at the benefits to sellers. But we haven't had to deal with government revenue or government expenditure yet. But when we have a sales tax, obviously, the government is going to be making some money. So we're going to be looking at government revenue changing when we introduce a sales tax. Now remember, under our dollar is a dollar assumption, a dollar of government revenue is the same as a dollar of seller benefit is the same as a dollar of buyer benefit. So our dollar is a dollar assumption will remain crucial. However, we're still not going to have any external costs or benefits. So our touchstone for the maximum social surplus will still be our perfectly competitive model. So we're going to start at our perfectly competitive equilibrium and look at the effects of a sales tax. Who wins, who loses, and what is the deadweight loss, i.e. the reduction of social surplus compared to the maximum social surplus or the perfectly competitive equilibrium. So let's get started at looking at what happens when the tax man comes to call. We'll look at the pizza market, so we've got quantity of pizzas on the horizontal axis, we've got price of pizzas on the vertical axis, supply and demand, and our perfectly competitive equilibrium of P0 and Q0. As we've previously seen, a tax on pizzas will put a wedge between the price that buyers pay and the price that sellers receive. The wedge will be exactly the per unit tax on pizzas. So here we've got our equilibrium with a sales tax. We've got a price to consumers PD which is exactly T dollars above the price that sellers receive and the amount of pizza that buyers would like to buy at PD which is given by QT is exactly the same as the amount of pizza that sellers would like to sell at price PS. So the amount of pizza that buyers want to buy equals the amount of pizzas that sellers want to sell, but the price buyers pay is exactly T dollars above the price sellers receive. That's our sales tax equilibrium. Following the step-by-step -step approach to welfare economics that we introduced in the last presentation, we put in all the construction lines that we think might be relevant, and we label all the areas. So here's area F, here's area H, and so on. And we have our table, which is going to have consumer surplus, producer surplus, government revenue, external benefits and total surplus, before the sales tax, after the sales tax, and any changes. So let's get started. What is the level of consumer surplus in the absence of a sales tax? Well, in the absence of a sales tax, the perfectly competitive equilibrium will have a price of P0 with buyers able to buy Q0 pizza. So the consumer surplus is the area under the demand curve, above the price consumers pay, up to the quantity they purchase, A plus B plus C. And we enter that on our table. What about after the sales tax? Well remember that after the sales tax, consumers are going to be paying a price of PD. They're only going to be buying QT pizzas. So consumer surplus, under demand, above the price consumers pay, up to the quantity consumers purchase, consumer surplus will be reduced to area A. And we can put that on our table. Notice that the sales tax means that consumer surplus falls from A plus B plus C down to area A, so consumers lose area B and C due to the sales tax. Now let's do producer surplus. In the absence of a sales tax, producers receive price P0, they sell Q0 units, so for producer surplus, the area above the supply curve, below the price that sellers receive, up to the quantity that sellers sell, that's area D plus E plus F, that big triangle. And we can put that on our table. After the sales tax, remember that producers only receive PS. In other words, whilst the buyers pay PD, the producers, the sellers, only receive the price buyers pay 
less the sales tax. So, the sellers receive price PS, they sell QT units, the producer surplus is the area above the supply curve or above the marginal cost curve, below the price sellers receive, up to the quantity sellers sell, area F. And we can put that on our table, and we can notice that producer surplus has gone from D plus E plus F before the sales tax down to area F after the sales tax. So producers have lost area D and area E. What about government revenue? Well, before the sales tax, the government doesn't get any revenue. So the government revenue is just zero. After the sales tax, the government gets the tax revenue, which is simply T dollars per unit of pizza sold, and they get that on every unit of pizza that's sold, the QT units. So it's T dollars times QT units, which is this rectangle here, areas B plus D. We can finish filling in our table. Government revenue before the sales tax is zero, government revenue after the sales tax is B plus D, so government revenue increases by B plus D due to the sales tax. Notice that we've still got no external costs or benefits, so we just have zeros in this row. Let's now add our columns up and see what we get for total surplus. Well, total surplus before the sales tax is the consumer surplus, A plus B plus C, plus the producer surplus, D plus E plus F, plus zero government revenue, plus zero external benefits, it's A plus B plus C, plus D, plus E, plus F. After the sales tax, consumer surplus is only area A. Producer surplus is only area F. But of course we have some government revenue, B plus D. We still have no external costs or benefits. We add up all the surplus plus the government revenue using our dollar is a dollar assumption. We just add them up in a dollar for dollar way. That gives us a total surplus after the sales tax of A plus B plus D plus F. Notice that the total surplus has gone down due to the sales tax. We started with A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. We've gone to A plus B plus D plus F. We've lost area C and area E. So our deadweight loss is C plus E the loss of social surplus compared to the perfectly competitive equilibrium. Now for the hard part. Let's interpret what the areas mean. Firstly, notice that consumers have lost B and C. But part of that has been gained by the government, the area B. B represents the amount of the sales tax paid by the consumers. Consumers used to pay price P naught, the price they pay has now gone up due to the sales tax, it's gone up to PD, and they still buy QT units of pizza. So the amount of the sales tax paid by the consumers is given by the increase in price to the consumers times the amount of pizza consumers buy after the sales tax, that's area B. And sure enough, B is a gain to the government. What about area C? Yeah, let's come back to that in a second. What about producers? Producers have lost area D and area E. But again, area D is easy to see. That's the transfer to the government from the producers due to the sales tax. From a producer's perspective, they used to receive price P0, but after the sales tax, the price they receive has gone down to PS. They receive PS, which is the lower price, reflecting their share of the sales tax. The lower price, P0 down to PS, times the number of units sellers sell after the sales tax, represents the government tax revenue paid by the producers. And sure enough, area D is a loss to the sellers of pizza, but it is a gain to the government. So area B plus D, the government's gain, is just the sum of the tax paid by consumers and the tax paid by producers compared to the perfectly competitive equilibrium.
But what about the deadweight loss? The deadweight loss is this triangle here, C and E. Some of it is lost by consumers, some of it is lost by producers. But what it really represents is the lost gains from trade when the sales tax leads producers and consumers to buy and sell less pizza. Without the sales tax, it was Q0 pizzas being sold. With the sales tax, there's less pizza being sold. But that pizza, the pizza between QT and Q0, that pizza created gains from trade. The price that buyers were willing to pay for that pizza was above the price that sellers were willing to sell the pizza. Why aren't there gains from trade now? What has the sales tax done? Well, notice that for all of these units of pizza between QT and Q0, the gains from trade, the difference between what buyers were willing to pay and what sellers were willing to receive, notice that that was less than the size of the per unit sales tax. So the problem is that if a tax is, say, $2 per slice of pizza, on these units of pizza between QT and Q0, the gains from trade is less than $2. It may be, say, $1.50 on one of these units of pizza. Without the sales tax, $1.50 in gain, you rip up. The buyers would buy, the sellers would sell, and there'd be $1.50 of benefit. But if they've got to give $2 to the government, well, they're not going to do that if they only get $1.50 of benefit. They would lose, overall, 50 cents. So the tax reduces trade because it rules out any efficient trade where the gains from trade on the pizza is less than the size of a tax. And that's what areas C and E represent. It's a reduction in pizza where the value, the marginal value to buyers, is above the marginal cost to sellers. Area C and E was gains from trade we used to have without the sales tax, but with the sales tax, we can't exploit those gains from trade. It's just not worthwhile for buyers and sellers, so they disappear. So let's summarise our results from a sales tax. It leads to a transfer from producers and consumers to government revenue, and that's the area B plus D. It, however, leads to reduced gains from trade, and that's the deadweight loss C plus E. Wherever the marginal gains from trade were less than the per unit sales tax, the trade won't occur anymore, and the gains from trade are lost. Both producers and consumers lose from the sales tax. However, the government gains revenue. And of course, if society values the revenue that the government gets, that's important. We value it at a dollar as a dollar here, but think of all the things that you want the government to spend its money on. Roads, schools, welfare, and so on. Boss is a loss, the government's got to get its money from somewhere. Under the dollar is a dollar assumption, a dollar in the hands of the government is the same as a dollar to consumers and the same as a dollar to producers. So the sales tax leads to an overall deadweight loss, a reduction in gains from trade, of C plus E. And a lot of what tax economists look at is trying to design tax systems to reduce the lost gains from trade. Because we want the government to have revenue, but we want to do it with a minimum deadweight loss. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next time.